Well, my name is Eugen Sol, and you may be wondering what this, what this guy is doing out here without a single presentation slide behind him, with no cue card in his hand. And the only reason that I don't use such supportive presentation methods is because I want you all to concentrate completely on what I say, and what I'm going to say is going to be quite direct and not at all hard to understand. So, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about why plastic matters in our life, the goal 12 of SDG, and the environment. So, plastic is one of the most frequently used substances of modern times. From the plastic wrapping of food products to the plastic used up there in satellites and the spacesuits of astronauts, plastic is basically part of everywhere in our lives. And <clears throat> plastic is quite easy to create and can be used in an infinite range of ways that are only limited by our own imagination. But the side effects of, cre of creating, using and disposing plastics has been reaching us through Mother Earth's cries for help. But we humans have been readily ignoring the danger signs nature keeps showing us and continually laying waste to the environment as we continually plow through natural resources. SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, can be looked at in many different ways and I chose to look at it at two different major parts. The first part is consumption, as in the consumption of resources and products in our daily lives. So, in my idea of responsible consumption is not using products that can harm the environment in the first place and also changing harmful materials so that they can no longer pose a threat to nature. And the second part is production. And my idea of production is cleaning up the plastic waste that we've already created and in, at the same time creating new and eco-friendly materials so that, they, so that we can clean up all the mess that we've laying out to nature. So, while plastic has many pros and cons, the biggest problem that plastic presents to us is that it takes forever to decompose. Of course, the best way is not using plastics in the first place, and technologies such as OHOs, which are biodegradable pots that can be filled with water or other beverages, can help us achieve non-plastic consumption. However, at present, it's quite impossible to completely turn our backs on plastic products. And that's why we go to the next best thing, which is making the plastics decomposable so that they won't take a million years to decompose. And biodegradable plastics are the leading technology in this field, <clears throat> which uses the help of certain microorganisms to decompose. Sadly, these aren't perfect. Even the breakdown of biodegradable plastics releases methane into the air, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas that contributes significantly to global warming. As future scientists, it is our job to fix the problems of these useful technologies so that we can dream of a completely plastic-free consumption cycle. Now, I'm going to talk about production. As I've said before, my idea of responsible production is not using plastics, uh, no, sorry, using up the plastic waste that we've created and creating new and eco-friendly materials at the same time. A Japanese inventor called Akinori Ito created a household appliance that can change plastic bags into crude oil. And while the crude oil is still a fuel that would give off carbon dioxide, CO2, when burnt, it's definitely a start. And inventions and technologies like this definitely could help raise the awareness to the potential of plastic reusage. Other inventions like aerogills and clothes made from plastic can also be looked at in the same way. So I've talked about why plastic matters in our life, Goal 12, and the environment. We're all going to end up in science-related jobs in one way or another, and I just want to say that it's never too late to rethink about plastic when we're older and to do something about it. Thank you.